you so much, Ralph. Boy, it would be great to have a Bible study today and just let people share their thoughts on that passage you read. I'd be curious to hear more. So if you haven't already gathered, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus is our shepherd, and we are his sheep. This is a beautiful relationship, and there is much art depicting this beautiful relationship. This is a picture of one of my favorites, of Jesus cuddling a baby lamb close to his face. We give thanks that Jesus is our good shepherd because sometimes we get ourselves stuck into a real tight spot. Could we see the video? Thank you. Ever felt like this? Ever had times like that? Have you ever fallen into a hole, into some kind of bad behavior, into the cracks of life? And you need help getting out. You're totally stuck and you simply can't free yourself. Thankfully, our good shepherd is watching over us and sends us friends to help pull us back out. And then we go back and do the very same behavior all over again and end up in that rut again. You dive head first into the hole. Could you play the video one more time? This sounds painful. In some versions of this video, if any of you know anything about sheep, there is a blood, a blood curdling scream as that sheep dives in a second time. We've all done it, probably more times than we like to admit. And sure, we're, we're grateful to have those friends to pull us out when we've done this thing, but I don't know about you. I don't like my friends pointing out to me where I've messed up, where I've gone wrong. You know, we get, we get embarrassed. We maybe feel ashamed, or sometimes we're just plain stubborn. We want to do things our way. So back into the hole we dive. Thankfully, our good shepherd knows this about we humans. We're a lot like sheep. Our good shepherd knows how obstinate we can be, how reluctant, how humiliated, and how full of all kinds of negative reactions to our mistakes. Our good shepherd also knows that bringing in friends to rescue us may not always work, may not always be the best tool in the toolbox to save us. So our wise good shepherd 
gives us another tool, gives us another way. He gives us the ability to learn from our mistakes. He gives us the gift of growth. Science tells us that the human brain is forever growing, changing, learning. It never stops. Studies have shown that we have the capacity to grow more brain cells and learn new ways up until our last breath on Earth. It's called neuroplasticity. Our, our brains are flexible. They don't age like the rest of our bodies. They can regenerate new cells, new patterns, if we make the decision to change what we're doing. You know, you've probably seen pictures of brains. They have all those wrinkles or grooves in them. And the way they get those grooves is when we do the same thing over and over. You really don't have to think that much about getting up and how to go to the bathroom and how to start your car or how to brew a cup of coffee. You don't need that. Your brain has a groove in it. You know how to do that. We can create new grooves in our brains when we try something new. In order to keep our brains growing, we have to keep our brains active. And not with things like gossip or TV or focusing on the bad news, but rather with growth. This is why I do regular gratitude practices, but other practices as well, to keep my brain growth-oriented, to try something new. When we focus on growing, we choose to learn a different way. We stop diving into the same not-so-helpful hole over and over and over. So if you're tired of feeling grumpy, grumpy, hopeless, and negative all the time, or if your friends keep telling you that you are grumpy, hopeless, and negative all the time, if you would like to create a new groove in your brain to be happier and more positive. Start a daily gratitude journal. Commit to doing it every day. And not just maybe one thing you're grateful for, but five things. And then maybe when you've done that for a while, try 10 things a day. Or start meditating. There are so many different ways to meditate. If you're curious to hear about some of them, seek me out. Or commit to some kind of exercise that you enjoy, because some of us don't like doing exercise or sweating. But maybe you could do something like dancing in the privacy of your own room. Dancing is good exercise. Or maybe you just need to get outside in God's creation. If you want to grow your brain and keep learning, read more books. Turn off the TV. Start a new hobby. Express your artistic, creative side. These may not seem like spiritual practices, but that's exactly what they are. Tools that our good shepherd has given to us to prevent us from falling into the same old cracks over and over and over again. Generate new grooves. Pick anything you heard in the sermon and commit to do it for at least a month. Give thanks to our good shepherd and quit diving into the same old rut. Alleluia. Amen.